Thank you very much. And we've managed to find a snake skin, and not just any snake skin, a massive example of one of Africa's most deadly snakes, and also uh, one of the longest venomous snakes in the world. This is a puff adder. This is um, one of South Africa's snakes responsible for the most deaths per year, probably ranking second to the Mozambican spitting cobra in terms of biting people, and a massive example. Easily, I don't know, a foot long, a, a three feet long. Now they only grow to about one and a half feet or so. Um, excuse me, four, four to five feet or so. And this one is one that is very close to that. So very close to, I suppose, a North American rattlesnake, with the exception that it doesn't have the rattlesnake at the, at, or that it doesn't have the rattle at the end of the tail. Uh, and also the, the diamondback rattlesnakes are a little bit bigger than our African puff adders. But nevertheless, just have a look at that. Now, I've spent the last 20 minutes or so actually turning the skin uh, it, it gets taken off in a sock when they change their skin and I've been turning the skin the right way around so that you can actually see the patterns on the skin and the keeled scales as they call it. That is a scale that is keeled and it gives the puff a quite a dull appearance. But just have a look at that head. Yo, I tell you. This is nightmare inducing. There the mouth would have been. Have a look at that. Now, Mary, you've asked me how old I think this snake is. Jandre actually asked me the exact same question. Mary, to be honest with you, I don't actually know how long puff adders live for. And it would be very difficult for me to judge the, the age of this particular individual because snakes are cold-blooded. They, um, they grow temperature and food dependent. So given a constant warm temperature or a temperature that's in the snake's uh, prime or optimal metabolic range and given, given a never-ending uh, series of food, a puff adder will grow indefinitely for its life cycle. Um, I mean, why don't, we, why don't we have a look quickly and see if we can find out, one of you help us if you don't mind, find out how old puff adders get. They're incredibly uh, popular uh, pets on the pet trade and so there should be very uh, overabundance of information about how long puff adders live for in captivity. Um, I'd probably say anywhere up to about 25 years. This particular individual will probably be older than 15 years old, most definitely. This snake is still very much alive. This is just the skin that it shed because it's gotten even bigger can you imagine that so it ran out of space in the skin the skin itself is only elastic to a point and then the, the snake has to generate a new skin it will then pop off this old skin and that is exactly what the snake has done go into hiding for a few days while the skin um, basically hardens and the scales harden and then it'll be off to look for some new food but just have a look at the camouflage that this snake would be able to... Now KG, you wanted to know are there, are there poisonous snakes that kill leopards? KG, this snake would be very capable of killing a leopard. Have a look at that. Now that's how you generally find puff adders, coiled up on one another like this. And it's not impossible to imagine that this snake lying underneath a bush would be able to bite a leopard, especially one as playful as young Shongila is this morning. They've got to be very careful for this. Luckily, these types of snakes are reluctant to bite. They don't want to bite. And they get their name from the fact that they puff, they hiss, they blow air out of their, out of their lungs, makes a very distinctive noise. And the leopard are... I've seen leopard bounce away from a bush with a snake like this in it. So hopefully uh, a young leopard like Shungile would be, would be wary enough just from a built-in genetic point of view that they would absolutely react to a puff adders giving a warning puff or a warning hiss and, uh, and would move away. But this snake, absolutely. This snake could easily kill me could probably kill a full-grown male lion with a, with a, with a full envenomation. Um, 
They have a cytotoxic venom, a virulent cytotoxic venom, which means that it's cell destroying and bites from puff adders usually form these massive swellings. The skin splits open. You have to have skin grafts. I mean, there's more than enough uh, information out there about people being bitten uh, accidentally. And then also mainly, of course, people are bitten because they try and handle these snakes, which you should never really do. They have a fang that lies in the front of their of their mouth so just under their eye and it hinges so at rest the snake's fangs lie in their mouth probably to about that distance when the snake strikes their fangs come out and hinge open and they can strike into their prey but now puff adders a lot of people get bitten by puff adders because they pick a puff adder up like this which is how you hold most snakes you hold their head now a puff adder's fangs are long enough to go through the bottom jaw and poke you in the finger. So a snake, or a puff adder can bite through its bottom jaw into your finger. And so the only real safe way of holding a puff adder is in a grip that holds it like this. You hold it on its jaw, basically like that. And that way if the fangs come out the bottom of the jaw, you don't get poked in the finger. But this is a dangerous way to hold a puff adder. Have a look at how thick this body is. It's as thick as my arm. The snake is incredibly muscular. And what it'll do is it will from time to time jink and move and, and spasm its body to try and get out. And they're strong enough to actually rip their head out of your hand and strike you on the arm if you're not careful. So for me and all my years of guiding out here, I've never picked up a puff adder. I also will not pick up a puff adder.